This video is going to show you an example problem on how to use free body diagrams to solve it. Two boxes sit on the incline as shown. What is the net force on each block? So what we're looking for is the net force. Now I've got a little strategy for this. To find the net force, I'm going to use F equals MA because I know that when I have blocks, odd bodies connected by a string, that they all have to move with the same acceleration. Different net forces because they have different masses, but the same acceleration. So if I can find a net, I can use F equals MA to find the net force on each body. I also need to establish a direction for net force. So I'm going to guess on this. I'm going to guess that because 9 kilograms is greater than 7, and the side the 9 on has no friction, and it's a steeper side than the uh, 7 kilogram box, or box B, that the 9 kilogram box is going to go down, and that's going to pull the 7 kilogram box upwards. So that's going to be my direction that I'm going to uh, choose. So let's slide some of this up, make a little bit of room. Here's the left hand side of the incline. 53 degrees down at the bottom. There's my free body right there with the dot. Looking at my forces, I have a rope, which means I have tension. I have a surface, that means I have a normal force. Even though there's no friction, it doesn't matter. All I need to have is a surface. And I'm going to put a subscript A on there, because it's the normal force for A. And because my box A has weight, or mass, it's going to have weight, so it's going to have mg. That's the weight of the object. And I, like I said earlier, the net acceleration, I'm going to put it on here, and the net acceleration doesn't touch the free body diagram when you draw the arrow. When I add up these vectors, mg, t, and na, ma net is the answer. So it's not a force that acts on the body, it's just when I add up these three, that's the answer. So it's just kind of hanging out in space. Make sure it, it should never ever touch the free body diagram, the free bo uh, the body itself. Okay, so now my coordinate system, I'm going to go parallel to MA net and perpendicular to MA net. If I didn't have a net acceleration, I would go parallel to the incline and perpendicular to the incline. But since I have a net acceleration, I'm going to go parallel to the net acceleration and perpendicular to the net acceleration. And notice too that the positive direction is down the same direction as MA net. So MA net has a lot of importance. It establishes the direction and what's positive. Now, what I need to do next is figure out which forces are parallel and perpendicular to MA net. Tension is parallel, so I'll leave that alone. Normal force is perpendicular, so I will leave that alone, but MG is not parallel or perpendicular. So I'm going to make a triangle out of MG that has parallel and perpendicular components. The perpendicular component is already drawn in red, and now here's the parallel component, so that's parallel to MA net. And then I can identify the side, so the opposite side is going to be MG sine 53, and the adjacent side is MG cosine 53. Now I'm going to make a little more room. Some of the forces in the x direction, well, in the x direction, that's the same as MA net. So that means when I sum up the forces, I'm going to get a number that's not zero. It's whatever this net force is. And I'm not going to write F net. I'm going to write MA net. It's going to help me solving some of the problems to make some substitutions more obvious later. And that's equal to MG sine 53 minus tension. Next step, put in some numbers and units and then do a little bit of math. And I get this 9a is equal to 70.44 minus t. Now when I write 70.44 in my calculator, I'm keeping more decimals in there. And later on, I'll actually pull out the other decimals and show them. But for right now, for brevity, I'll write it as 70.44. Uh, some of the forces in the y direction? Well, in the y direction, that's perpendicular to ma net, so that's going to be 0. It's not accelerating in that direction. And that's going to equal to na minus mg cosine 53. So that means that the normal force is equal to 9 times g times sine 53. So Na is equal to 53 newtons. For the next box, box B, there's my incline on the right, 28 degrees, and there's my body for box B. So I'll go through the same process. It has a surface, so therefore it's going to have a normal force perpendicular to the surface, or normal to the surface. And that's going up because it's reacting to the fact that the box is pushing on the surface. Then it's going to have a rope pulling it up, so that's going to be the tension pulling it up parallel to the incline, parallel in the rope's direction. And it has mass, so therefore it's going to have weight, which is going to be equal to mg. And this problem, this side has friction, unlike the other side. Friction is going to oppose the motion, since I think the box is going up, friction is going to go down. And because it's going up, that's going to be the net acceleration. Then I'll establish my coordinates, so it's going to be parallel and perpendicular to the net acceleration. Again, if I didn't have a net acceleration, I would just go parallel and perpendicular to the incline. So they'll match up in this case. Next step, I've got to find components that are parallel and perpendicular to my uh, net force. So friction 
eta and t are all either parallel or perpendicular, but mg is not. So I'm going to draw the rid vector, which is going to be perpendicular to ma net, and the other rid vector is parallel to ma net. And then I'll define the sides as mg cosine for the adjacent side, and the opposite side is mg sine. And now I'll organize my work a little bit. Move it up. Next step, summing up the forces in the x direction for the second free body. So the x direction is parallel to ma net, and ma net does two things. It defines the direction of the x, it also defines what's positive. So every force that goes the same direction as ma net is positive, every force that goes the opposite direction is negative. Remember, we use plus and minus signs as direction indicators. Positive meaning it matches, negative sign meaning opposite of. So in this case, in the x direction, it's equal to a number, a net force, which we're going to write as ma net. And that is going to equal all the forces going in the same direction minus the forces going in the opposite direction of ma net. So T minus the friction on B minus mg sine 28. Throw in some numbers and units, do a little bit of math, and I get 7A minus T minus FB equals 32.21. In the Y direction, I get 0 because it's not accelerating in the perpendicular to the incline or the Y direction. So the normal force minus mg cosine 53 is equal to 0. So A to B is equal to 7 kilograms times G times cosine 53. So now I've got a number for the normal force. Now let me get rid of some of the clutter. And then group things a little bit closer together to work with. The top equation for the normal force, well, it doesn't do me any good. So that's not really helpful. I'm not going to do it, use it for anything. But now I have a problem. I have too many variables and too few equations. I need another equation. Friction to the rescue. So friction is a great equation because Friction itself, the frictional force, is parallel to the surface, and the normal force is perpendicular. So one of these variables will appear in the y equation, and one will appear in the x equation. So friction itself can tie these two equations through substitution. It can tie these two equations together. So in this particular formula, the fy and the fx are tied together by substituting mu times eta for friction. So here's my new formula in, in the mix. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take mu times eta b, and I'm going to replace the friction on B with that expression. So now it's going to look like this. 7A minus T minus mu times A to B minus 32.21. And again, on my calculator, I'm keeping all the decimals. Next step. I'm going to take my eta, and the 41.28, and I'm going to replace eta with that number. So when I do that with all my decimals, I get 7a minus t minus 45 minus 41.28. Again, all the decimals pulled out of my calculator. And the 31.21, I went back and pulled out the decimals out of my calculator for that as well. So now I'm starting to show you a little more decimals, a few more decimals here. So at this point, I get 7a minus t, or 7a equals t minus 50.78377897. So when I look at this, really what I have are the top, two, the top equation and the bottom equation. In other words, two equations and two unknowns. There are lots of ways to solve it from here. I can use linear combinations, I can use substitutions, I can use Gaussian elimination, or what's known as reduced row echelon form, or row echelon form, or I can use matrices with A inverse B. There are lots of ways to go from here. I'm going to choose substitution. But remember, you're probably wondering where do these extra numbers come from? Now, they came from the calculator. I just didn't write them all down, but they're in there. So now when I look at my two equations, I get the 9a is equal to 70.44 minus t, and the 7a minus equals t minus 50.78377897. Uh, I'm going to take the top equation and rewrite it. So I'm going to set t all by itself. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the second equation, and I'm going to replace the t with the expression 70.44 minus 9a. Now I have one equation and one unknown. So it's time to start grouping my numbers together. So I'll take the 9a and the 7a and put them together to get 16a. Take the 70 minus the 50. And that's going to give me the the 19.65587301. And I'll take a to get 1.228 meters per second squared. But that's not the final answer. That'll help us. Out of that. So that's the net acceleration. To find the net force, I'm going to take f equals ma to find the net force. So again, remember, if you're wondering where these extra numbers come from, they're stored on the calculator. Can't emphasize that enough because you're thinking about it. So at this point, I know the net acceleration. I know it's 1.228 meters per second squared. So I'm going to use F equals MA to find the net force on box B. 
So I take its weight of 7 kilograms, or mass of 7 kilograms times the net force, and that gives me 8.596 newtons. And then on for A, its mass times the net force, and that's going to give me 11.052 newtons. And that was the final answers to find the net force on each box.